Andrea is a workaholic advertising executive, struggling to juggle work with family as Christmas time approaches. There comes a turning point in every life, a moment of change, a moment when one experiences something so powerful and compelling that it changes the very makeup of our hearts and thus the very direction of our lives. For Andrea it was the moment she made a flippant wish to Santa. Andrea wishes she could go back in time and change the choices that she had made in her life because they have made it a complex task to juggle her work and family lives together. The scene opens with Andrea falling off of her couch at her office. She has spent another night there, working late just a day before Christmas. Her personal secretary, Jess, walks in. She remarks that Andrea really needs to stop sleeping at the office, which in turn would mean that she really needs to stop living at the office. It's almost Christmas break after all. They'll get to spend a whole week week with their families. Speaking of family reminds Andrea of her Christmas gifts list, which to her relief was all collected, wrapped, and waiting in her car, by Jess, in the nick of time. Andrea wishes her a Merry Christmas. Andrea picks up her coat, and was just about to leave when Nick, her boss, corners her. He proclaims that she was just the person he was looking for at that very moment. Nick asks if she has got a minute for a quick talk. She doesn't really have any more time, Andrea feigns a smile. She tells Nick that her husband and kids are waiting on her back at home, and Nick reassures that he's going to make it real quick. He starts with acknowledgement and appreciation for her great work with their previous ad campaign. The client is ecstatic, and their sales with the dishes are going off the charts. It was shocking that they even had charts for selling dishes. Next, Nick informs her that he has been in discussion with the chairman of Green, Clean and Pristine Cleaning Supplies, their next client, and they have set up for shooting the advertisement tomorrow morning, on Christmas Day. Astonished, Andrea points out that that particular client was Will's project. Nick says that since Will is off celebrating Christmas in the Bahamas, and Layla Brown, the spokesperson for GCP Cleaning Supplies, is here in Boston, and will be leaving for Italy on the 26th. Sixth, he's left with no other options than to bring it to Andrea. He reassures her that it will just be a couple of hours first thing in the morning. Andrea is disgruntled. It's Christmas morning. Nick says that all she needs to do is be on set bright and early, and keep Layla happy while she films her lines. Super easy and super quick, he says. On her way home, Andrea decides to pick up some groceries for a Christmas morning breakfast, and she calls her husband. John, who is busy with last-minute Christmas decorations, does not think it to be a good idea for Andrea to cook. Her cooking is always an adventure. He then asks how her last campaign turned out, and Andrea tells him that apparently it was so good that their sales are going off charts. She finds the moment as good as any to tell John that she will be working on Christmas morning. Annoyed and a little exasperated, John cuts the conversation short saying that he needs to get some presents wrapped before the kids get back home. A crestfallen Andrea drives to the supermarket to get the groceries. As she steps out of the mart, she spots a man clad in red and white dressed as Santa Claus, chanting Merry Christmas. Andrea quickly donates a couple of dollars in the red bin that he holds. He thanks her, addressing her with her given name Andrea. This was mildly surprising, so Andrea questions him how did he know her name. To which the man replied matter-of-factly that he was Santa. He knows everything, including when someone's sleeping or awake. He knows when someone's been good or bad or somewhere in between. Andrea listens half an ear as she watches a little boy follow in her suit, dropping some money in the donation bin. The man Santa Claus thanks him by his name too. Andrea doesn't read too much into it and turns towards the direction where she parked her car. The Santa then hollers that he also knows that that night there's going to be a shooting star, which is a magical thing in its own right. But a shooting star on Christmas, well that's the off-the-charts kind of magic to wish upon. He encourages Andrea to not be afraid to make a wish, as she might get what she desires. Andrea sighs, thinking if only it were as easy as wishing. She never really believed in wishes. When she gets home, Andrea finds her children, Lexi and Matt, at the kitchen table giving their father a hand with gingerbread cookies frosting. Andrea tells Matt that she had received a call from one of his friend's mom, saying that Matt won't be sleeping over at their place with his usual group of friends. Matt confides that he wasn't feeling very in sync with them lately. Lexi offers Andrea to shoot a TikTok workout, dance video with her. When she elaborates that those mother-daughter videos get tons of views, Andrea agrees gleefully. John asks at what time Andrea leaves the next morning. Lexi hoots cheerfully at the notion that she's now 20 bucks richer because she and Matt made a bet on whether she would be working on Christmas morning or afternoon. Chuckling with disbelief, Andrea tells John that her boss Nick gave her no choice. Apparently the talent got stuck in Boston, and it wasn't even her project, but she will have to be a team player for this one. On Christmas morning, Andrea wakes up to raucous movement outside her window. Merry Christmas, she says to herself. Andrea walks into the kitchen and finds her family enjoying a not-so-engaging breakfast. She reminisces about the time when Lexi and Matt used to wake her and John up at 4.30 in the morning to open all their Christmas presents. And now they sat, side by side engrossed in their phones, quaintly enjoying breakfast prepared by their warm and sunny father. Thinking of rude awakenings, Andrea asks Matt about the boys that were making all that noise using their hoop. 
They turned out to be Matt's friends from middle school. So Andrea wonders why Matt wasn't practicing along with them, and comes to know that her son's interests have vastly changed since the past year. Andrea feels a little left out. She offers to make some Christmas pancakes, if they are interested in them anymore. She was reminded by Lexi that the last time she tried making them in 2019, resulted in them receiving a visit from the fire department. And it turned out almost the same this time around as well. Once the smoke is all out, Andrea cleans herself up and dresses to leave for work. Out on the porch she greets a grumpy Larry, Merry Christmas, who himself thinks nothing merry about it. As she turns for her car, she gets smacked in the back by the ball that Matt's friends were playing with. She takes no issue with them as the boys sheepishly apologize. When Andrea gets to the location of the ad shoot, the filming has already begun. She walks in on their disgruntled influencer, Layla Brown, and an equally disgruntled director. The two of them couldn't seem to get along very well. Ms. Brown can't remember her lines and Paul, the director, has had enough with the retakes. As Andrea tries to grasp what was going on, the situation quickly deteriorates for the worse, and Layla Brown storms off the set saying she's not interested anymore. Nick calls Andrea at that moment, he hears the clamor happening in the background, and asks if everything was good. While Andrea tries to pacify him with little white lies and hangs up, the director packs up his stuff and leaves, saying that Layla Brown is like the nightmare before Christmas, and that his wife was waiting for him back home. As Andrea is driving back home, but she is pulled over for speeding in the residential area. Just another thing that she did not need to happen that day. The officer lets her off the hook by a simple license check. She returns home, and plops on the living room couch. She is exhausted. The fact that she had stepped out of the house for work on Christmas morning was bad enough. Topped off with the failed attempt at shooting only makes the whole thing too sour to swallow. John comes around the living room watching her lay there. He inquires about her day, and Andrea tells him the events of the morning. Apparently Lexi is obsessed with Layla Brown. Maybe she could help give some insight about what Layla might have been thinking at that disastrous shoot, or simply how to relate to her. Too bad Lexi wasn't there to guide Andrea. She tries to shrug the day off, as she helps John mash some potatoes. She asks him about his work, which hasn't been much this past week. Andrea offers to stay at home in John's place, as she has the whole week off for Christmas break. John wasn't thrilled about the idea. He says that he was hoping to spend this time together with her as a family. They've hardly had any time since she's taken this new job. For John it had been a bit lonely. For Andrea, well she has always thought of John as her home. She feels like she can never thank John enough for accepting her, and especially Lexi as his own. With him around, she has never had to worry about anything. John takes her in an embrace, and expresses his desire to make new memories with her. Andrea agrees. Taking time away from him and the kids was never what she wanted. But a year ago they had both agreed, that Andrea has to take the job in order to keep their house, pay for its repairs after the basement was flooded, and save for college funds for Lexi and Matt. Andrea changes into a beautiful emerald silk dress, ready for the TikTok video workout that Lexi had proposed that morning. Their movements are not coordinated at all. Andrea tries to follow Lexi's lead, simultaneously keeping her eyes on the reference tutorial playing on the TV. She had danced before. John and Andrea used to have some pretty smooth moves. She can do that again. She twirls as the tutorial instructs, and trips on her own feet landing flat on her face. Matt and Lexi hurry to her side. Matt helps her up. Thankfully no appendages were injured. Just a little sprained ankle. She'd be fine. Nick calls again. Andrea was just thinking about making that call herself. He wasn't convinced though seeing as he was, that she had not brought it to his notice that their shoot today had fallen apart, putting thousands of dollars and their relationship with their client at risk. He informs Andrea that he's been on the phone all morning, trying to get Paul, Layla and their client all on the same page. He has finally managed to convince them to give it another shot, so the shoot will resume tomorrow. Andrea wasn't happy. She protested that she'd wasted her Christmas morning already, and now he expects her to let go of the rest of her break. She needs to be with her family. Nick wasn't having any of it. He ordered her to be at the location first thing in the morning, before anyone else. Period. As Andrea is on the phone, Millie, John's mother, arrives. Andrea is glad she's there. She is the most insightful and compassionate mother-in-law a woman can hope for. The kids are thrilled to see her, both of them demanding her immediate attention to look at this game or that viral video. Andrea watches this standing in the hallway. She has been feeling less and less connected with her family this Yuletide season. That evening they sat by the fireplace, opening gifts they had received from Millie. Each present was carefully picked, and was accompanied by a backstory. Next it is Andrea's gifts to be opened. It was exciting for everyone, Andrea included, because the gifts list was written, and collected by her secretary Jess. Andrea has no clue as to what was wrapped in her presents. To Millie, she gave a bathrobe. It was a nice bathrobe, just that, Millie never really uses one. Ever. To Matt, she gifted a slate gray cardigan. Matt hated cardigans. Lexi received a bottle of perfume. Lexi does not wear any perfume. 
Finally, to John, she gave another mixer. A pink one. It's late into the night as John and Andrea sit at the table, nursing their cups of hot chocolate and gingerbread cookies. It is quiet now, peaceful. The chaos of the day all but forgotten. Andrea nonchalantly mentions that since the shoot that day had been a colossal failure, Nick had called her in tomorrow as well. John sighs. It is what it is. Andrea offers to clean up after him. John doesn't protest. This holiday had turned out to be the exact opposite of what each of them had wished. He is not resentful of Andrea, but the situation is getting harder and harder to cope with. Andrea takes the trash out. She stands there in her yard by the trash can. The chilly air feels refreshing. She didn't want her Christmas to end this way. She had never imagined ever having a Christmas day like the one she's had. Her gifts were an embarrassment. Her boss is pissed. Her project is falling apart. And her family grows distant by each passing hour. Oh how she wishes she could do this day all over again. She witnesses the shooting star just then but is too dejected to pay any heed to it and step back into the house. That raucous movement outside her window wakes Andrea up again the next morning. Her first thought, what's that noise? Her second being that she is late. She stumbles out of bed, careful not to put too much weight on her sprained ankle, which, surprisingly, didn't hurt at all, as if there was never any injury. She hurries down to the kitchen telling John that she is running late and blowing each of them kisses. John thought Andrea had told him she didn't have to leave until later. Andrea contradicts saying that she was supposed to be there first thing in the morning. This was strange. John distinctly remembers what Andrea had said. He lets it slide though, and asks Andrea to be back in time for them to open presents. As Andrea steps out on her porch, she is touched by a slight sense of deja vu, seeing Matt's friends playing basketball at the same spot as yesterday. She walks up to her car and greets a grumpy Larry, Merry Christmas, who himself thinks nothing merry about it, exactly like yesterday. As she turns for her car, she gets smacked in the back by the ball that Matt's friends were playing with, again like yesterday. She is a bit miffed this time though. One day is an accident but, two days in a row begins to look deliberate. Andrea rushes on set, apologizing to Paul for not getting there before everyone else. Paul, who was beginning to get frustrated by Layla Brown, and her inability to learn words, couldn't understand what Andrea was talking about. Watching them in an intense conversation, Layla approaches them, wondering if something was wrong. Andrea apologizes to her as well. Layla doesn't recognize her. Andrea reminds her that they had just met yesterday. Layla is pretty sure she would have remembered if they had. Paul encourages Layla, saying she was doing a great job if only she could remember the product name correctly. Andrea thinks Layla to be a broken record. She ought to have learned her lesson after yesterday. Nick calls Andrea at that precise moment, he hears the racket happening in the background, and asks if everything was good. While Andrea tries to soothe him, she finds herself mouthing Nick's replies before he has even made them. Watching Layla storm off the set, Andrea hangs up on Nick and stops her mid-rant. She apologizes for being late and not being there to mediate the situation. Layla doesn't recognize her or her reference towards a conversation that they supposedly had the day before. Despite Andrea's effort, she storms off. Paul, the director, packs up his stuff and leaves, saying that Layla Brown is like the nightmare before Christmas. Andrea finds herself mouthing his words as well. And then her world goes dark. She comes to consciousness with Paul fanning over her face. She asks him what day it is. It was Christmas Day, of course. December 25th. Paul makes sure that Andrea is stable but, his wife was waiting for him back home, so he had to go. This is unbelievable. People don't relive their days. And if, let's take for argument's sake, that they do, why did day? Why not a special day, something that holds a special meaning to her? Like, her wedding day, or the day her kids were born. There's no logical explanation for this. Maybe all that work and stress has finally paid off. Maybe she's losing her mind now, having a nervous breakdown. The deja vu continues as Andrea is driving back home. She is pulled over for speeding in the residential area. Again, just another thing that happened the previous day. Exactly the same. The officer lets her off the hook by a simple license check, which Andrea already knew he would. She gets back home and strides straight to the kitchen, asking John if he and the kids have pulled some elaborate prank on her, which somehow involves his boss, co-workers, Layla Brown and even the police, which sounds insane and unattainable, but is also the only reasonable explanation for why she's been left living her Christmas day all over again. Exactly the same. As if on repeat. John is very confused. He cannot make sense of anything that Andrea has just said. He marks that Andrea doesn't look well, maybe she should lie down for a while. Andrea lays in her bed, her mind racing through one explanation after another. Days don't repeat themselves. It's the universal law. This whole thing feels like a good bad dream. Maybe that's what it is. Maybe she's dreaming. She decides to test her theory and jumps off her bed, legs and arms flailing, landing flat on her face. It most certainly is not a dream. Andrea changes into the same emerald silk dress as she gets ready to finally spend some time with her family. When she gets to the living room, Lexi excitedly asks if she's ready for the TikTok video workout that Lexi had proposed that morning. By this point Andrea knew what was going to happen, and so she waits for Nick's call before she and Lexi could get into their uncoordinated dance moves. Surely enough, Nick calls her at that precise moment. 
He questions Andrea about why she had not brought it to his notice, that their shoot that day had fallen apart, putting thousands of dollars and their relationship with their client at risk. Well, in her defense, Andrea already knew Nick is going to hear about it anyway. Nick doesn't appreciate the humor. He informs Andrea that he's been on the phone all morning, trying to get Paul, Layla and their client convinced, to give them another shot tomorrow. Andrea thinks it all sounds good as long as tomorrow happens. Nick wasn't having any of it. He ordered her to be at the location first thing in the morning before anyone else. He says he expects her to call him, and reassures about how everything's going on set. Millie, John's mother, arrives. Although Andrea is glad to see her there, this whole time is now starting to feel mundane. Like the day before, as the evening rolls over, the family sits by the fireplace opening gifts they have received from Millie. Each present was carefully picked, and was accompanied by a backstory. When Matt suggests they should open mom's gifts next, Andrea is left flabbergasted. She remembers how dreadful her gifts were. She does not want to go through that humiliation again. So she fibs about having forgotten her gifts at the office. Lexi holds her wrapped package in hand, and tells her that she hasn't. So there goes nothing. It's late into the night as Andrea sits at the table, feverishly searching for a plausible explanation for that day's chaotic events. She wasn't depressed like one article suggested. Neither did she have had a stroke. She feels perfectly healthy. John joins her with cups of hot chocolate. He notices that Andrea has been on edge that entire day. Andrea assures him she is fine, and that she could not explain anything to him yet, he wouldn't understand. Andrea takes the trash out. She stands there in her yard by the trash can. She didn't want her day to end this way. She had never imagined ever having to relive a day, not to mention a day as bad as the one she's had. She wishes she hadn't had that day to do all over again. Similar to the day before, she witnesses the shooting star just then, but is too despondent to pay any heed to it, and step back into the house. Suddenly she is reminded of Santa's words. He had told her there will be a shooting star this Christmas. As insane as it sounds, this was the only explanation left unexplored. The same raucous movement outside wakes Andrea up again the next morning. She's miserable. She does not want to go through these disastrous motions again. It feels like an autopilot now. It's Christmas Day again. She gets dressed to leave, but today will be different. Today she's going to find that Santa, and she's going to get some answers. Out on the porch she greets the grumpy Larry, Merry Christmas, who once again thinks nothing merry about it. As she turns for her car, she catches the ball that Matt's friends were playing with this time around. She lets it slide with a smirk as the boys sheepishly apologize. At the supermarket parking lot, Andrea finds Santa, chanting Merry Christmas, and greeting people with their actual name, just like the other day. Andrea confronts him right on, asking what he had done to her. She describes the events of the past couple days, how she's been left with living the same day over and over again. And it wasn't even a good day. Santa smiles slyly. He hadn't done anything. It was Andrea who had made that wish upon the shooting star. Andrea has come to that realization as much herself. She tells him that she had unwished it last night. Upon the same shooting star. Once a wish is made, it cannot be unmade Santa tells her. There are rules for that sort of thing. Of course, why would anyone warn you to be careful what you wish for, if there weren't any rules? People would then go around wishing and unwishing willy-nilly, and then how on earth would that work? So then Santa asks Andrea what it was that she had wanted when she made her wish. Andrea had of course wished that she could do that day over again. But those were just her words. What she had wanted was to make that day turn out right. There were so many things that were happening all wrong then. There was her answer. Her wish will come true and she'll finally get what she wants. As she gets back into her car, Andrea realizes that she needs to get the formula right. This time when the officer pulls her over for speeding, Andrea urges him to give her a speeding ticket, seeing as none of that would matter tomorrow. She is eager to get back home and go back to sleep. That way maybe she can reset the day and get it right. In the living room, Andrea finds John stoking the fire in the fireplace. She is struck by an idea. She questions him about that time, a couple of years back, when her attempt at making pancakes had started a small house fire. She distinctly remembers John smiling, even as they stood barefoot in the snow, watching the fire department take control. She asks him why was he smiling then. John was smiling, because even though Andrea had no business in the kitchen, she tried making those pancakes, all because she knew they were his favorite. That, according to him, was something. Andrea is jubilant. She thinks she's got the clue. The next morning as Andrea wakes up, she waits for the basketball game causing raucous noise outside her window. Surely there it was. This time she'll get it right. She flies into the kitchen, a spring in her step this morning, as she announces to make pancakes. Her family was hesitant, to put it mildly. But that's what she really wants to do. And she'll get it done right this time. It didn't turn out right that time. Or the day after that. Or the third or fourth or fifth time. She tries everything. From pancakes, to playing basketball with Matt's friends, to holding a placard for Layla Brown to remember her lines correctly. Nothing worked. It's the sixth day or so. Honestly, Andrea has lost count by now. She's weary as she wakes up on another Christmas morning. With the same grind. She does not want to go to work today. She tells as much to John as she plops down on the breakfast table. It does not matter whether she goes to work or not. It's all the same, over and over and over again. And that's when the notion strikes home. 
What she really wants is to stay home and spend quality time with her family. They bundle up in their coats and mittens, and step outside onto the backyard, where the snow was almost to the knees. Andrea wants to make a snowman together. She names it Dennis. This time when Andrea greets Larry, he waves back with a hesitant smile. Matt notices his friends playing basketball. Andrea urges him to join them for the game, but he steps back inside the house complaining about it being too cold there to play. Andrea follows him inside. She wasn't having this deflecting answer this time. When she probes Matt a little, he divulges that he didn't make it to the basketball team a couple weeks ago. Andrea was astonished, she had been so ignorant. She asks Matt why he never told her that. Matt says she was always working, and he didn't want to burden her with it on top of that. Andrea apologizes profusely. Her family had always been her priority. It may not seem that way lately, but she loved each one of them dearly. She never wants to be in the dark about whatever was happening in each of their lives. Matt tells Andrea he misses their basketball practice sessions together. Andrea offers to pick up right where they left off, right then. Andrea and Matt enjoy a light-hearted game along with Matt's friends. Nick calls Andrea then. He wants to know how it was going there. Andrea tells him that she was having a great time playing basketball with her son Matt. Nick is confused, she was supposed to be at the shoot, working. Andrea didn't care by this point. She tells him that she was eager to experiment with what would happen if she didn't show up to work this time. Her nonchalantly tone only serves to rile Nick up. She advises him to spend time with his family, and then proceeds to switch her phone off. As the day goes on, Andrea tracks Lexi down in the living room. She was watching some influencer video which she was sure Andrea would have no interest in. Andrea assures her she was willing to give it a try. Grandma Millie arrives, and Lexi rushes to engulf her in a warm bear hug. Millie is ecstatic, she lives for these fuzzy moments. The three of them sit together, as Lexi shows them her favorite influencer's latest video. Andrea recognizes her as being Layla Brown. This surprises Lexi. She didn't know her mother was familiar with who Layla Brown was. As the video proceeds, Andrea watches Layla list off a number of ingredients that her makeup didn't contain. And to think that she couldn't say, green, clean and pristine together. Andrea couldn't believe it. Lexi tells her that Layla is a natural in front of the camera. An idea strikes Andrea just then. She offers to introduce Lexi to Layla Brown. Lexi could not believe that her mother was working with her favorite influencer. Nick calls again. He was infuriated that not only Andrea didn't show up to work, her phone was switched off as well. The shoot had been a complete disaster without her. Layla couldn't remember her lines, had a blow up and walked off. Andrea knew all that already. She tells him that she knows he has been on the phone all morning trying to get Paul, Layla and their client convinced to give them another shot tomorrow and that he wants her to get their first thing in the morning to babysit everyone. Nick was left with no words to say. Andrea assures him that she'll be there tomorrow. She had an idea about what she needed to do. Later that evening, John and Andrea reflect back on what an amazing day it had been. Matt getting back to playing basketball, and Lexi building a snowman. Andrea reminisces about their first Christmas before they got married. She had promised Lexi that they would make a snowman, but they never got any snow all winter. Lexi was so disappointed. Andrea had then found an old snow cone machine and ground ice all night. They spent the next morning outside building the world's safest snowman, which according to Lexi was the greatest snowman ever. Although it was a fond memory for the both of them, Andrea finds John's countenance go bittersweet as she professes her love for the memory and for him. Like the day before, as the evening rolls over, the family sits by the fireplace opening gifts they have received from Millie. Each present was carefully picked and was accompanied by a backstory. When Matt suggests they should open Andrea's gifts next, she wastes no time in collecting them back from each of their hands. She professes that in the last few days she's learnt that she hadn't been listening enough. And these gifts were all really really bad. So now, she wants to ask them point blank, what do they each want for Christmas? A Christmas gift comes from the heart. It's not the gift, but the sentiment behind that gift that shows that you know and love that person. So Andrea sits alone making a list of what her family's likes and interests are. Millie joins her there. She was heading home but wanted to check in with her first. Andrea confides that she had taken the promotion to get more money to give her family a more stable life, a higher education for her kids. But what was all that money for when it means that she couldn't be with her kids, couldn't take care of her family? That night Andrea stays up to practice the art of pancake making. The next morning, her late night crash course pays off. The pancakes turn out to be perfect, not burnt but fluffy and very delectable. Andrea feels like she can conquer the world today. She urges Matt to play basketball along with his friends. She asks Lexi to come along with her, as she leaves for work. As they were getting into the car Andrea spots Larry, and offers him to join them if he hadn't any plans for dinner that night. He cheerfully agrees to be there at 6. When Andrea and Lexi get to the location of the shoot, the filming has already begun. She walks in on their disgruntled influencer, Layla Brown and their equally disgruntled director, Paul. Andrea requests Paul to take a 5-minute break, for she needs to discuss something of import. 
She then introduces her daughter Lexi being a huge fan of Layla Brown. She tells Paul that Lexi has a video that would interest him. Lexi was surprised as she was pretty confident that she had only shown Layla Brown's latest video to only one member in her family, and that was certainly not her mother. Paul watches Layla's video in disbelief. How could she have done that, when she had been fumbling with simple words all morning? Andrea thinks that Lexi can connect with Layla, just like Layla had been connecting with Lexi all this time. She nudges Lexi to go talk to her, maybe that way she could calm Layla down, and get to the bottom of the issue that they were facing there. When Lexi returns to Paul and Andrea, she leaves Layla in tears. She tells them that Layla's entire career has been in her bedroom with her cat. This professional setting was very nerve-wracking for her. She's alone in an unfamiliar city, amongst strangers and these lights and cameras. It dawns on Andrea that the poor child was simply overwhelmed. Lexi's presence at the shoot sets a calm and cheerful tone to the atmosphere. This time when Layla delivers her lines, she doesn't fumble. The shot turns out splendidly. Lexi forms a fast friendship with Layla, and Andrea urges Lexi to demonstrate their TikTok dance before her. When Nick calls to check in this time, Andrea jubilantly delivers him the news that they have got it right this time. When they get back home, Andrea asks John how Matt did with the game. He tells her Matt did fine. He had been embarrassed since he didn't get into the team and didn't want to face them. But they played basketball all morning, so John was pretty sure Matt will be fine. So now, Andrea has one last thing left to make right. She needs to get last-minute Christmas shopping. While Andrea decides on what color blouse she should buy, she receives a call from Nick. This time his call is of a personal nature. Nick feels miserable for being disrespected by his in-laws year in and out. Andrea seconds his feelings. When you marry a person you in turn marry into their family as well. And for the family to not treat the said person with a semblance of respect, it can gnaw at a person's soul. Andrea advises him to set his boundaries around them, let them know that they are guests in his house, and that they can't walk all over him. Andrea decides on the red dress, and because thanks to Nick she will now be getting a raise, she also buys two sparkly pairs of shoes. Gifts in hand, Andrea leaves them all. In the parking lot, she comes across the same Santa Claus. Andrea confides in him that her wish is finally coming true. Her kids think her as their hero, she's found a gift her mother-in-law will actually like, and she's about to win her husband back. At dinner that evening, Andrea's plan of setting Millie and Larry up is going phenomenally. Millie is not only getting along nicely with her unexpected date, but she also loved Andrea's Christmas gift to her, red wine, her favorite kind. Her gifts are a success. Matt loves his new basketball, as he has reignited his passion for basketball. Lexi is elated to receive a chic and professional briefcase, as she plans on spending more time with her mother aiding her on sets. And John, dear, sweet John is mystified by his present. A bottle of champagne. From the restaurant where he and Andrea, quite literally, bumped into each other. Millie clears the room to allow Andrea and John some privacy. Andrea crosses over to sit by John's side. It feels like a long time ago since they first met, and at the same time, feels like just yesterday. She was a widow with a young daughter, unsure of her prospects in life. Marrying him has been the best thing that could have happened to her. As John tries to brush off the subject, Andrea imparts him with the knowledge that her Christmas bonus has brought them into a very good financial position. So she's been thinking about taking a few days off and going on a vacation with him, somewhere warm, like he had wanted. John lets out a strangled breath. He didn't want to do this on Christmas. But they were sitting there having that conversation, and he couldn't hold it in anymore. He can't be with someone who isn't there with him, someone who is not present even when they are there. He thinks it's best for them to spend some time away from each other, separated. He suggests breaking this news to the kids tomorrow. For now, they can just focus on celebrating Christmas. Andrea feels crushed. She sits there with an old photo of her and John. Millie walks in holding two tumblers of red wine. She tells Andrea that this is going to be hard on everyone especially the kids. But according to John, it's been hard already. Andrea didn't know what else she could do. Her promotion is due in January and if she walks away from this job now, she'll be losing everything that she's worked so hard for. Millie asks her to consider what she will lose if she doesn't walk away. But Andrea thinks she can fix this. She just needs to get to sleep. She just needs one more do-over. When Andrea wakes up the next morning, it's silent outside. She walks up to her bedroom window, there's no sign of Matt's friends. Baffled, she hurries down to the kitchen, where she finds John standing alone nursing his bowl of cereal. She asks him where the kids were and what day it was. December 26, John tells her. This can't happen. Andrea grabs her keys and drives off to see Santa. She finds him at the parking lot, enjoying a day off of the busy season. Andrea tells him her distress. She is about to lose her family. This is nowhere near what she has wished for. Even though she's gotten everything else right, she has lost the most important thing in the process. She does not want to lose John. A wish can't do what you won't do for yourself. As Andrea gets a call from Nick, Santa vanishes into thin air. Thinking that it was the most inopportune time, Andrea answers Nick's call. Nick was ecstatic, the client loved their ad from yesterday. 
They want to commission a full campaign with influencers from all walks of life. Best part being, they want Andrea to be in charge of the project. But Andrea's mind was elsewhere. Andrea packs up her stuff. With one last apology to John she drives off. The memories keep flooding her mind as she drives. She can't do this. She can't leave John. She can't pursue a promotion, when it entails breaking her family in two pieces. She takes a sharp turn, on the way back home. She reaches home in time, just as John has sat Lexi and Matt down for the talk. She urges John to let her speak to them first. She has messed up. Over and over, she tells them. Every basketball game, or joke, or funny video that she's missed. Every moment that she wasn't there to cheer them on, or cheer them up. Every time that she paid more attention to things going on at work, than to things at home. She loves them more than anything. But she got so cooped up in providing for them, that she lost sight of being there for them. For all of them. John tries to cut into her monologue. But Andrea wasn't done yet. John has always supported her, since the moment they met. He's helped her chase her dreams, even when she chased them too far. And he did it out of no obligation, but simply because this is how he truly is. And maybe Andrea just grew used to that. Maybe she simply took it for granted, never realizing that she could lose it. But this Christmas has made her realize that her dreams are here. With him, without John by her side, she does not have any dreams. She does not care if they go broke anymore. She does not care if they have to sell the house or trade in her car for a bike. She will let everything else go, if there's even a chance that she can hold on to him. She implores him to not make any decisions yet, and to let her stay at the house. John takes Andrea in a hug, saying he can't let her leave either. Ironically enough, Nick calls at that moment, asking why Andrea hasn't been at the office yet. This time though, Andrea was clear with him. She tells him point blank to tell the client, that she won't be available until after an extended Christmas break. In which time she is going to take her family to a well-deserved vacation. It's been a while since they've had family time together. 